harvesting the spleen from a mouse and making a single cell suspension of spleen cells is a complicated procedure that again works better with a little visual demonstration. Before you begin this process, you need to make sure that you have already ahead of time a vial of culture medium, a small dish, two microscope slides, a syringe, and three different size needles. Pour a small quantity of culture medium into a small petri dish. It's important that everything be kept cold throughout this procedure. Now, harvesting the spleen. The mouse that we will use will already be sacrificed for you in a humane manner using an overdose of carbon dioxide. Place the mouse on a piece of paper towel and soak it with ethanol. This does two things. It helps keep the area that you're working sterile and it also keeps the fur of the mouse from getting all over the place. With the scissors, make a small snip in the skin of the mouse. Then what we want to do is pull back the skin to expose the peritoneal cavity. If any of you have ever skinned a rabbit before, you know all you have to do is pull. And when you do, the skin of the mouse will pull back away from the underlying muscle layer. The spleen will be found on the right side of the mouse. Now this is the mouse's right side. So if you lay the mouse on its left side with its right side towards you, you will see a small reddish bean shaped organ, which is the spleen. We do not want to use the larger reddish organ, which is the liver. Make a small snip in the muscle wall and remove the spleen trimming off as much of the connective tissue as possible. Then, we're done with the mouse at this point in time. Put the spleen into the dish of cold culture medium. With the scissors, cut the spleen into three or four pieces depending on its size. Now, what we want to do is we want to take this spleen and smash it into a single cell suspension. One of the reasons we use the spleen is because it does not have contain any connective tissue, and so it can easily be broken apart. We're be, going to be using what are called frosted microscope slides, where at one end they have a little bit of frosting. That creates a rough surface. So what you do is take a piece of spleen, put it on the rough surface of one microscope slide, Take a second microscope slide and smash the spleen between the two rough surfaces. What this does is disrupts the spleen cells. Then, with a dropper, wash the smashed spleen cells back down into the dish. If there are pieces of connective tissue, like you see right here, Try to leave those behind on the microscope slide because they are just going to interfere with the process. Any pieces of connective tissue can simply be removed. Repeat this for all the pieces of spleen. And you see as we do this, The culture medium in the dish starts to become cloudy. Here's another piece of connective tissue that I'm just going to remove. You will lose 
some of the material along the way. But a spleen starts off with about 9 times 10 to the ninth cells, which is more than enough that we, cells for our experiment. At this point, we have started the disruption of our spleen cells. Now what we want to do is we want to further break the pieces of spleen cells apart into a single cell suspension. To do that, we need a syringe. And three different size needles. We're going to start with an 18 gauge needle, which is the largest bore has the largest size hole in the needle. Very carefully remove the cap from that needle and draw this sus suspension of spleen cells up into the needle and force it back out and do this three times. What this will do is this pulling the cells up through the needle will break apart the larger chunks of cells into smaller pieces. Throughout this entire procedure, we want to work as quickly as possible because the spleen cells have just been removed from their normal environment and they will sustain damage throughout this treatment. Then, after we use the 18 gauge needle, we then want to go to a slightly smaller needle, a 22 gauge needle, and repeat the same process. If you're trying to draw the solution up and it suddenly jams and you can't pull up any more liquid, that may be an indication that you've got too big a piece of spleen or perhaps a piece of connective tissue is stuck. In that solution, in the needle. When that happens, push it back out. You may be able to just push the material out and dislodge it. Or it may be jammed so badly that you simply have to get another needle. Every time you put the needle back into, change needles, please be careful putting the needle back in its sheath. We don't want anyone to stick themselves with a needle. At this point in the process, I'm going to stick a 15 milliliter sterile centrifuge tube on the ice so it can start to cool down. And now, this is the hardest part. This is the last step where we draw this material up through a 26 gauge needle, which is a very fine needle and this is typically where you will have problems with it jamming like right there I'm not drawing up any more liquid oh yes I am it's still drawing up into the needle again each time you do this you do this three times
Now, the last time that you draw this solution up into the 26 gauge needle, you do not want to expel it back into the small petri dish. This is the last time we're going to put this material through the needle. So at this time, we want to transfer our suspension of spleen cells into the 15 mil centrifuge tube. Now, we may still have quite a few cells remaining in the dish. So to make sure we don't leave those cells behind, put a small volume of culture medium into the dish. And transfer it into the 15 mil tube as well. At this point in time, we should have a single cell suspension of spleen cells in our culture medium in our 15 mil centrifuge tube. And so now we're ready to continue with the next phase of the preparation of these spleen cells, which is centrifuging these cells and washing them and getting them ready for culture.